All the students that were in a certified financial planning class, they're laughing at me. And I said, well, Mr. Adams, you want me to drop out? I said, no, I didn't say that. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I figured, man, the shoe fits though, you know? Because if my outcome was to make more money, is college the only way or getting certified financial planning supposed to be it? The only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. Work and then success. Woo! I'm making money! I'm helping families, my business is growing. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. Okay, let's go, let's go to the next slide. Employer versus employee needs. So here's what employers need. We're looking for employees with several years of experience in their industry. Uh, okay, where's, <laughs> where's, where's all my college grad? All my college graduates, go ahead and stand up, all rise. College graduates, all rise. There's, these, these are smart people. Uh, it's, uh, woo! Uh, okay. <laughs> wow, wow, wait, wait, stand, keep standing, keep standing. Okay, so all the college graduates. How would you like to be brand new out of college? You got student loan debt. They're not going to hire you because first you need several years of experience. And then for most students, they have college student loan debt. But they're looking for several years of experience. They say you're over qualified. So what does a student do? Shit, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back and get a master's. So therefore, I don't pay my student loan debt. I can put it in the ferment because I'm getting my master's. I still don't have what, though? <laughs> experience so like damn you got you got your masters they're still not hiring you because you don't have any experience. experience so you go back into the firm by getting your PhD B. now you're a doctor you're highly academically qualified but no experience <laughs> but isn't that the cycle how, how many guys in college were, were thinking about that cycle too? How, by the way, for those of you standing, how many of you have your master's degrees? There you go. <laughs> oh, that's <just>, wow. <laughs> right? By the way, good job. But how come, for those of you that have college degrees and master's degrees, how come you guys decided to go in business for yourself? Why did you choose to be, why, why, why are you going in business for yourself? Because they don't pay enough, man. Because they still don't pay enough. Don't pay enough and not enough time with family. Quality of time. Overworked, underpaid. Oh, very, very well put. Overworked and underpaid. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Wow. Still with the college degree. For those of you who have a, don't have a college degree, I just like saying, heck yeah, bro. That's why I didn't go to college. <laughs> yeah, I keep saying that. Overworked, underpaid. Right. Same thing. Overworked and underpaid. My wife Tara is an entrepreneur, and she made me quit. <laughs> she said she go. She didn't make ahead. me quit. I'm just saying, seeing gotcha. her progress and do other things that I couldn't do working all them hours. I, I went into, be honest with you. Was it progress uh, uh, um, experience-wise or financial-wise? Well, she was just doing it. As an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Gaines, what, I'm, I'm curious, you're a VP. Well, Why did you even, before you even became a VP, how come you decided to go pursue entrepreneurship? Uh, I tell people six figures of college debt doesn't get you a six-figure annual salary. So, Ooh. so, so not a trade. <laughs> By the way, Make some noise for these entrepreneurs in our office. I got college degrees right here. Thanks. Okay. Okay. By the way, I, I respect those who went to college because here's what you said by going to college. I'm going to start something and I'm going to finish it. A lot of people in this world today don't do that. Isn't that weird? I'm going to start something, but I'm not going to finish it. Why? It got too hard. Okay. But for those of you who got a college, college degree, amen. For those of you that went to a couple colleges, listen, I'm not dogging you out, but... Uh, <laughs> Did go to college? You might. Uh, okay, raise your hand if you're like a college dropout. Yeah, hey, okay. Hey, no, no judgment on you. Hey, no judgment on you at all. Uh, technically, I could. I, listen, I'm in that. I'm in, I'm in that uh, uh, a ballpark too because I went to, I went to one year of college with my GI Bill to get my certified financial planning uh, uh, certification. Right. I remember Mr. Adams dogging me out. What are you doing college for? Was I want to make more money? Ha ha. Well, how are you going to do that? I'm going to go in business for myself. So a uh, uh, classroom full of this. Feel like this. Everybody going through certified financial planning curriculum in the DePaul University in downtown Chicago. So during the day, I work Jiffy Lube, Jiffy, uh, 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 Hood Tech at Jiffy Lube. I work as a server, drop on my kids. On Wednesdays and uh, Thursdays, I had uh, college. So I go down downtown, take the train, come back at 10 o'clock, 10.30. But that was my, that was my routine, okay? A year later, because this guy say, well, good luck with your insurance, because everybody in the, in the, in the class, like, how are you going to get 
I had financially. I said, I'm going to be in business for myself. All the students that were in a certified financial planning class, they're laughing at me. I'm, like, what are you I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what do you mean? Are you not going in business for yourself in financial services? No, man. I'm working for Tia Kreff. I'm working for the Board of Trade. I'm working for Chicago Board of, you know, Chicago Board of Exchange. I'm working for the uh, exchanges. I'm working for the mutual funds. Like, right? Like, what? Am I weird? Thinking that I should be in business for myself? Maybe I need to go down that route. And I- I'd stick with insurance. Mm-hmm. A year later, guess what I started making? I started making six figures in this thing. Mr. Adams saw, hey, because I retook his tax class. Introduction class, now I, t- I was taking his tax class. He goes, hey, 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 uh, hey Mr. Sapal, how's that insurance thing you're doing? It's my insurance thing. It's not my insurance thing. By the way, is annoying? Hey, my insurance thing? Well, last month I uh, made around 10000 I'll I think I might be on track to see making 120,000 a year based on what, what's going on. People are like, what? Uh, people are like, really? Yeah, I mean, uh, Mr. Sapala, on the hall room, uh, uh, on the hallway. Get out of the classroom, and need to talk to you in the, hall, in the hallway. Everybody's like, ooh. I'm like, what, what's up, what did, I, what did I say? So no, 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 all due respect. As a 19, 20 year uh, CPA, uh, experienced in a CPA, a three year ju- uh, junior, uh, what do you call that, junior professor, uh, adjunct professor, Adjunct professor at college, I make 90000 a year. 19 years as a CPA, a certified public accountant, and an adjunct professor part time, I'm making 90000 a year. You're making more money than me. Right? He's doing both. He had two jobs. How many years ago? 19, uh, this, is, uh, this is 2001. Oh, one. one. This is during the crash of the first uh, the dot-com bubble. Okay? And I said, well, Mr. Adams, you want me to drop out? I said, no, I didn't say that. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> But I figured, man, the shoe fits, though, you know? Because if my outcome was to make more money, is college the only way, or getting certified financial planning supposed to be it? Anyway, make a long story short, I completed my certified financial planning curriculum, but I never took the CFP exam, but I completed the curriculum. I hung this, this, uh, this thing on my wall. Very happy, I'm about to take the test, clients come in, about to do some rollovers and annuities. She looks at the thing, and I, because I've always dealt with multicultural middle class clientele. She looks at the thing, she says, oh, you're a CFP. I said, no, I just completed the curriculum. I'm about to get my exam. I'm gonna get the certification here in a second. This is back then where you didn't need a college degree to get a CFP. You need a college degree to, CFP, college degree to get a CFP today. Back then you didn't. She says, no, I'm about to get my CFP, but I haven't taken the exam, but I've completed the course. Oh, she's talking to her, she says, psh, 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 what's going on? I'm about to do a million dollars of rolls. I got the annuity paperwork ready to go, mm-hmm. right? Psh, 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 psh. Well, it's come to our understanding that people who are certified financial planners, they charge a lot of fees. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not a certified financial planner, and if I am, I'm not taking a fee here. I got commission, I'm making commission anyway, right? I got, I'm taking care of the commission. But you don't need to pay me upfront fee, like I'm a lawyer. She goes, well, you know, it's just, you know, long term, I know long term, I won't charge you a fee. <laughs> no matter what I said at that point, she just tuned me out. I'm like, man, this whole thing about this, let me take this thing off. <laughs> what about building a business on a part-time? So the solution that entrepreneurship provides people is they don't have to do it always full-time. Could you potentially do it on a part-time business? Let's take a, let's, let's take a look at uh, this schedule. You wake up, five o'clock, six o'clock, mental prep, workout, read, listen to audio, music, go for a walk, meditate, pray, eat breakfast, eight o'clock, get in the car, get to work, tra- bus, train, however. Daytime job, nine to twelve. What do you, what do you do on what do you do on lunch breaks? Twelve to one. You're making calls. You're driving personal activity. You're focused on booking field training appointments for the evening. From one to five, you do your regular job. Five to seven o'clock, commute, spend family time. Seven to nine, what are you doing? Okay. Running appointments. That's your part time schedule. Where's my part? Where's my part? Raise your hand if you're a part time entrepreneur. That's your schedule. The, the question is, what do you do when you're not at the, at the job? Because right now the job takes up a lion's share of your day. So if you want to control your income once and for all, if you want to say, I want to build a business on a part-time, I'm going to have a side hustle, become a main hustle, I'm going to have my plan B my, be my plan A, well, you have to make, make more useful time of when you are off the clock. Now, for you that's in part-time, you have to make that mental shift from going from an employee to becoming a boss. I remember I uh, took a job for like two weeks as a security guard. It was a, it was a tough job, right? I had a fake badge, right? No gun? Yeah, no, no gun, flashlight. <laughs> I see you. Stop. 
I'm going to call 911. <laughs> it was, uh, it was uh, uh, I think it was Hostess. You know, so I was guarding Ding Dongs and Twinkies. Right? <laughs> so when my shift was over, the guy took, he relieved me. I had my, my suit and shirt, shirt and tie in my garment bag. I go to the bathroom. I get out of my security guard outfit, give him a flashlight, right? Come back out. I'd freak out the guy who took my post because he didn't recognize me. He's like, who are you? Oh, I'm the guy that relieved you. You look like you were a security guard. Yeah, because I'm dressing for the job I want. Right? By the way, why do we encourage you to dress up for, for Wednesdays? You don't dress for the job you have. You dress for the job you want. want. And by the way, guys, just don't get me wrong. I love my T-shirts. I love my sweatshirts. I love my caps to the back. I love all this stuff. But there's a different part when you're an entrepreneur. You're making a million dollars a year wearing a $25,000 Rolex. And you got a cap to the back. But if you're still trying to make your money, still trying to make your work, you want to dress for the position you want. So this is building on a part-time basis. So here is around your friends at your job, this is where you start sounding different. Lunchtime. You start sounding different at your job. You start sounding different in the afternoon. What's everybody doing at the job mostly in the afternoon? Where's my five hour, five hour energy, right? <laughs> right? You're taking energy, or they're drinking coffee in the afternoon. Why are they drinking coffee in the afternoon? Because they're trying to wake up, because the job's so damn boring. Where's my, where's my full-time, where's my full-time entrepreneur to stand up real quick? Where's my full-timers at? Hey, let me, let me guys ask you a question. If you're full-time entrepreneur, sometimes you're working till three o'clock, you forget that you haven't ate all day yet. Yeah. Is, is, is that just, no, you guys too, right? Yeah. Here's our full-timers here. Full-time entrepreneur. You forget sometimes that it's five o'clock in the afternoon. You're like, oh, damn, it's time for lunch. <laughs> That's it, right? This is a different energy and mindset when you're in business for yourself. Grab seats. Good job. All right. Everybody sizing each other up right now. Who's the part-timer? Who's the full-timer? Okay, next slide. So here's areas for you to focus on building a part-time side business. You're using your plan B to be your plan A. Number one, three main areas of focus for part-time people is you got to start booking appointments. One of the guys I interviewed, uh, you guys know, uh, you know Damon John, who built, who built FUBU, one of the sharks on Shark Tank? Yes. So he started selling... FUBU out of the trunk of his car in New York and all the boroughs. Well, guess what he started to do? He started to recruit ambassadors to go into, the, into Queens, into Brooklyn, into the Bronx, right? That's all he did. Once he, once he ran out of inventory, he started recruiting other people to sell his brand. What does FUBU stand for anyway? For, for us, by us. So there's a message behind his clothing brand. Okay, there's a message behind his clothing brand. It's a big reason why she and I invested in that uh, liquor company called Uncle Nearest. There's a message behind Uncle Nearest. Okay, that's, that's for another story. But I bought into the story. He was selling based on his story. My question to you is, are you selling in your story? Mm. Are you selling financial services? Next one. Daily, we call these DMAs. DMAs. What are DMAs? Daily monitoring activities. So let me ask you a question. What should you be doing every day even though you're not here at the office? Phone. Making phone calls. What else? Booking, Booking appointments. What else? Prospecting, fast starting, follow up. These are all daily monitoring Activity. activities. You get it? Your, your job is duplication. And if you're not duplicating, you become a salesperson. Mm -hmm. The reason why people don't grow into business or a business is because they stopped duplicating. They think, I can do this myself, I can do this myself. The minority mindset comes in. How many, we're talking about the minority mindset. Well, if I did this myself, I'll save some money. Mm -hmm. Let me cut my own lawn because I can save 20 bucks this week. Let me change my own oil. That saved me 30 bucks going to Jiffy Lube. <laughs> Ask yourself this question, entrepreneurs. What is your time worth? Mm. Next, next, uh, 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 okay, so here, think about this. How do you feel in your business if you didn't prospect somebody and you didn't collect a new name? How do you feel about your day? Not productive. Not productive at all. You didn't grow your business. You weren't shaking hands. You weren't meeting new people. How do you feel if you don't have a recruit in your business that day? How do you feel? Okay. Your business didn't grow today. Right? What happens if you didn't see a client? You didn't, you didn't, how many guys wrote business this week? Raise your hand. You wrote business. How did you feel when you wrote business? <gasps> Woo! I'm making money. I'm helping families. My business is growing. You're excited about that, right? Yep. Yes. What happens if you did nothing all day? How do you feel? Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. You should feel it. By the way, some people, there's, there's people in here, they, they, they do nothing all day. They feel okay. Oh. <laughs> some, of you guys, some of you guys don't even check the damn group me's. But yet, you want to be financially independent. I don't get it. I want to do none of the work, but I want to be financially free. How does that work? It doesn't. 
the only time, what was that, was that saying? The only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. Work and then success. Thank <laughs> you.